Rewatching friends for the hundredth time. Hair a mess in your sweats with a bottle of wine. It ain't watching the clock at the same old gym. Killing yourself to get magazine thin. Another rev, another set. I'm Tony, we're with Canadian Beats, and we're here at the Horseshoe Tavern with two-time Manitoba Country Music Award winner, Kendra Kay. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you. So the last times you played in Toronto were your show in 2018 and Canadian Music Week in 2017. Yeah. Excited to be back? I am. It's so it's so cool to be back. I've never been here at the Horseshoe, so it'll be super cool to, to play this new venue, and we'll have a good time. And you haven't interviewed with Canadian Beats since 2018, so how yeah. has your career evolved and changed since then? Oh, wow, I guess it has been that long. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, um, well things have really have really progressed since 2018. Um, I guess one of the biggest milestones for me is uh, just recently I signed with a booking agency, Sakamoto Agency, and that's, that was a huge game changer for me. It really pushed my live show over the edge and I'm getting bigger shows, being on the road more, going to new places, which is kind of a big dream for me because the live, the live aspect of my music career, as you could call it, is is for me one of the biggest parts. I just I love performing, so that was a huge, a huge milestone. And my my music has started to evolve a bit since 2018, and I've really I've really found myself as an artist. And the you know my new tracks that I have are kind of a different side to me than I would I from what I originally started and I'm really excited to have this kind of evolved sound and really discovered who I was as an artist. You know speaking of your new tracks you recently had two singles from your recent AP in the top hundred yeah. was it the national airplay charts? The That's country correct. National airplay yeah. Charts? yeah so how um, how do you think your music has evolved since you released Broken in 2014? My goodness that was yeah that's crazy to think about <laughs> because when I started recording um, music for my very first EP Broken I was 16 17 years old and I I didn't really know who I was as an artist or a person at that time and I'm, don't get me wrong, super proud of the music that I created at that age and that stage of the game but I've evolved so much into, you know, over the past, that was 2014, the past six years, oh my goodness, six years, <laughs> it's been, it's been crazy. I found who I am not only as an artist but as a person, you know, from recording at 16, 17 to now being 23 years old and kind of having a little bit more life experience and being in the business and kind of discovering what I like, what I don't like, who I like to work with, who I don't always like to work with. It's kind of, it's it's really grown me into the person that I am, not only the artist, but it's it's kind of helped me along my everyday path of life. Wow, that's yeah. a good answer. <laughs> I read that you're from a really small town in Manitoba. How do you think that your hometown and your childhood actually affected your music and your sound? Well, for me, growing up in a little tiny town, um, it really, I think it really helped. I mean, who I am today is because of where I came from. The, the little town I grew up in, Elkhorn it's called, is, it's a pretty special place. It's a very, a very community orient, orientated place that, um, Everybody is so supportive and I and I know that I wouldn't have as big a fan base and as big a support without that bottom coming up because for me starting in a town of 500 people I had 500 fans right from the start and everybody's been such a big support system for me and you know it was pretty special when I put out my latest EP more to me I decided that I wanted to do my EP release party back in Elkhorn at our little hall and we sold the place out and it was kids that I grew up with and people that I used to play hockey with and parents of kids that I used to play hockey with that all came out to see the show and I really wanted to be able to share that new music with the people that have been there from the beginning first because it was you know it's really important to me to have those connections and and keep close with the people that have been supporting me since day one. And do you think like that small town Canadian upbringing is what led you to country music specifically? I'd say so. I mean, I grew up 
living a country lifestyle when I'm not busy on the road with music. I'm at home on the farm with cows and the horses. And so I live a country lifestyle and country music is all I've ever known growing up. That's all I was in the house. That was all my parents mm -hmm. listened to. It's all my grandparents listened to. So I just, I grew up knowing country. And for me, I couldn't see myself in any other genre, but just because of, you know, my lifestyle and my upbringing. No, on that note, do you think there are any genres or artists outside of country that actually influenced your sound? Hmm, you know, I'd say genre-wise, if you were kind of maybe taking a look back a couple of years, I kind of had a bit of like a rocky country stage. So I'd say if any, any genre other than country music has kind of influenced me has been kind of more the old rock stuff. Because if yeah. you'll see tonight in my show that <laughs> the... My, my live show has some old rock stuff in it and it's very high energy and kind of the more like grittier, big guitar sounding type of stuff. And that's stuff I like to play live. Now for looking at my recordings on the other hand, <laughs> some of my stuff has a little bit more pop influence into it. And that really is, I'd say it's still pulled from the country genre just as the country music has evolved to be kind of more, you know, blurring the lines between the pop country and all that stuff that's at radio right now. So, I guess that if that answers it, I don't know, but that's kind of the extent of it. How would you change your set list depending on what city you're in? You know, I keep my, I do keep my set list pretty straight across the board. I mean, if I'm playing an old time rodeo, I play a lot more old country songs, but yeah. you know, I come to the city, I make sure I throw in kind of some of my, my rock stuff and kind of like to, to mix it up. And I really, but no matter where I go, I like to show people the versatility that I have throughout my show, whether I play, I start with, you know, some original stuff and into some modern country and then throw in some old country and some old rock. Like I just, I really like to be able to show the variety of music that I can sing. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you, in, um, sorry, when you interviewed with us back in 2016, you said that your biggest goals going forward were to tour around Canada. And since then, you know, you've toured Manitoba, British Columbia, Alberta, yeah. Ontario, correct me if I'm missing anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, that's, I know, I'm, it's crazy. I, I often, I think with the everyday, you know, just as things move forward, if you really step back and think of how much stuff you've done you don't realize until you really take that step yeah. back and look at it kind of from the outside in because you know i always say without you know if you take the music out of everything that i've done i've had some crazy experiences even like this summer i went out to vancouver island for a festival but i mean even if i wasn't out there for music i probably wouldn't have never traveled to vancouver island yeah just to go so i got to see a whole different part of canada that was amazing to see because of music. So the whole, this whole journey has really been able to open my eyes and, you know, get to see new things and meet new people. And I've made, I've made friendships and I've, you know, grown relationships. And it's, it's really special that, you know, I've been able to, to have that. And it's crazy to think that I've played all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast. It's, it's unbelievable to me. And you know, you've played like headlining shows, you've played festivals, and you've played like stadium shows, even like the CFO mm -hmm. uh, halftime show, the Banjo Bowl. Yeah. What would you say is one of your favorite touring stories or like your favorite show that you've ever actually played? I'd say for, for moments wise that CFL, the halftime show at the Banjo Bowl was probably the coolest moment for me. Um, just the fact that it was my very first stadium show. Yeah. And I never forget the feeling of, you know, when I was done my first song and the crowd cheered and it like it just you could hear it like roar down the stadium. Like it's crazy. <laughs> Honestly, that's something that you could you can never really I don't think you can get until you've stood there and and heard it because it just like it instantly lift goosebumps on my arms and I was just like Oh my god, if I die tomorrow, I've lived a full <laughs> life. Like this is great. Like yeah, it was I can't even imagine it. Yeah, it's it's crazy and I'm I'm lucky to have been able to have, you know, the team that I've been working with all there and be able to really, you know, share those experiences with those people and I just that that show for me is definitely always going to be at the top of the list for sure. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good answer. <laughs> 
So what would you say are your goals going forward into the new decade? Like you've already done so much since last time we asked you. What what could beat that now? <laughs> what can beat that? You know, and I'm still saying the same answer than I was in 2016. <laughs> I just want to keep keep playing and keep touring. And if I can keep doing what I'm doing, I'm happy. And if I keep, you know, having those little moments where I'm building myself and building my career and having those special, you know, moments, I'm, I'm always going to be happy. So if I can keep doing that through 2020 and hit up a bunch of new places to play live, I definitely would be happy with that. <laughs> so thank you so much for sitting down with us. Mm. We'd love if you told our listeners where they can find your music online. Absolutely. Well, all my stuff is on my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all that, which and the links to that's on my website, which is KendraKMusic.com. Okay, perfect. Good luck with the show tonight. Thank you so much. When you wanna live your best.